Good morning. Mama Sue and Harold are here with you, and we're just going to talk for a little bit. Okay. I think um, <clears throat> the whole United States has been cold. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, well, probably. A lot of them have. I know I talked to some folks at church last night who have relatives in Iowa and uh, Wisconsin, and they said they were really just uh, snowed in. The, the girl whose mom and dad are still in Iowa said, talked about how much snow they had. So we know it's it's, it's not a, just us. It's not just us. And you know, I felt kind of silly the other day when I posted how cold it was and that we were getting ice and schools were closed. And so many of you commented that your temperature was 20 below. And I thought, oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know how you stood it. But you know... In North Alabama, we saw pictures on the news, and the snow is just beautiful. It's still there. They still have snow on the ground. I just saw a post of a coaching friend of mine who was asking if the wa local Walmart was open. They're in need of some stuff, and they wanted to know if they could, wow. if the roads were open, they could get there. Goodness. That's, that's unreal. But, you know, um, today it's warmer here. It's above freezing. Mm -hmm. It's in the 30s. But it's above freezing. But tomorrow, it goes right back down, and there is a chance of s snow flurries again. But, but 60s by Monday is what they say. That's right. That's wonderful. <laughs> Harold likes the hot, hot summer. I like the different seasons. I like spring, and I like fall best because the temperature is is bearable. It is bearable. But anyway, we just wanted to come in and, and you know, let you see that we're both here and we're both doing fine. But um, what I really wanted to do today, so many of you continue, the new folks continue to ask, what do you mean when you say, be salt and light. And and those of you who have been with me for a while know that I wear a necklace almost every day mm -hmm. that says salt and light. Uh, and I tell them that it comes from Matthew 5, 13 through 16 in the Bible, but I, I just want to read you verse 5. Verse 13. I'm just Matthew five thirteen. That's yeah, right. Verse thirteen. It says, "This is Jesus saying it. You are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it's lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless." Well, this morning, uh, a friend of ours, um, Harold's mother and her mother were friends we know. thought we were cousins for a long time i called her grandmother my aunt and she called my mother aunt yeah while we were little kids growing up in church together and didn't realize until later that there <laughs> there was no blood kin we just that was just a a familiar way of of uh talking about each other but aunt alva was her grandmother but, so, uh, but Nora Ellen Russell, a dear friend of ours, sent me a message this morning. And she said that her friend had posted um, a devotion this morning about salt. And she said, I think you would enjoy it. And I read it and I reread it. I think I read it four times because I thought, this is so good. And I hope that I can explain it a little bit like she did. Okay. When Jesus said you, and he meant us too. It's from the Sermon on the Mount. That's right. You are the salt of the earth. Well, you see, during Jesus' time, salt was a treasured commodity. I mean, the Greeks thought salt was divine. Salt was used to seal friendships, to seal marriages. It was a covenant. 
And uh, we all know that even today, salt adds flavor. You know, it. we all know when something hasn't been salted enough. Right. Harold especially. <laughs> he, uh, he will salt his food before he tastes it. And sometimes if I have tasted it and it's plenty salty, I'll say, don't put any more salt. But salt adds flavor. It also makes you thirsty. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you eat something real salty, you're gonna be thirsty. And salt stings, but it heals. It has a healing quality about it. It does, it, it can sting you. Mm -hmm. I, when I was going through a chemo, I would, the ends of my fingers would split. And even today, if I barely hit them on something, they're gonna split and bleed. And then if I get salt in that, oh my, it stings. But we are the salt that God uses to bring his message to the world. Now we're salt. What does that mean? When the world sees people who say they're Christians, and they're mean, and they're sour, and they don't smile, they don't treat others kindly. What message do they get? You know, our lives, we as Christians, shouldn't push people away from wanting to know God. Our lives should make them thirsty. They should want to know what's different. Whether you think so or not, people notice us. And sometimes they may say, tell me how you've been married to him. To that guy for 50, 50 years. years. <laughs> or it'll be 52 Two. years in June. In June, that's correct. Or they might say, how do you remain unshaken when the world just looks like it's falling apart? Groceries are so high, gas is high. And I have been asked, how do you keep going when you've had a bad diagnosis? And I know you've been through so much pain. It's because I know who is in control of my life. That's right. That's right. God, I don't know if you would say he orchestrates everything that we go through. He allows. But he, he knows what we're going through. And the fact that we're going through, when, when Sue was diagnosed with cancer, God, I don't think God was saying, well, let's test Sue to see if she's going to make it through. I think, I think things happen. God allows them to happen. But he's still God. Absolutely. Regardless of what happens, he's still God. He's still in control. And and we knew, Sue knew from the outset, whether she was healed here or if the cancer... If I'd be healed by going to heaven. Won, yeah, if the cancer seemingly won that battle, then the victory would be that she would be in heaven and she would be a lot better off than she would be sitting here with me. But... God allows us to go through things so that we can be salt because right. people watch us. Right. And they're going to see if you're sour, if you're grumbling, if you're always complaining. Well, that's not going to make them thirsty for what we have. When Norland sent me this, I thought, oh, this devotion is so perfect. And I wish I could have written one that could have told all these things like that did. But you know what? We live it. We live our life in a way to show others one or two things. One, that we are going to trust God no matter what. In Daniel, even if. Right. Or if we're just going to grumble and complain and say, why me, God? Why me? But we, I, I don't want to. I, I didn't look at Sue's devotion before she brought it out. 
I don't want anybody to think that we're presenting ourselves no. as that person who never grumbles, who never has a bad day, who never thinks the the worst, I guess you would say. Surely, you know, we are human and we do have those thoughts and we do have to deal with that <clears throat> often. But in the end, I know that regardless of what happens, what's going on, God's in charge. Absolutely. And he knows what's best for me and for Sue and for you. And I have to ultimately trust him. That's right. I trust him because I know he loves me. And just like a parent disciplines a child sometimes and the discipline may seem harsh and it may put to the child particularly but it's it's for their best god knows what's best for me and we are reading right now in job Mm -hmm. and you know god had had said job was blind blameless right a righteous man but his friends thought he had done something wrong to cause all that trouble to come. But we, if you keep reading, you know that that's not what happened. I mean, God doesn't punish us for every trouble we have. That's not his punishment. Right. Sometimes we bring things on ourselves. Right. But anyway, I hope that you know that God loves you. The thing that I want you to know is no matter what your past has been, we heard a message last night at church about you've got to forget your past. Once you've asked forgiveness, God doesn't remember it. And you have to forget your past and know that God can use you. Right, right. We can we can become salty again, become salty again, be noticed again for excuse me, for good things. Don't be noticed because you're an old grouch face like I am sometimes. Be noticed because you have a good attitude. Be noticed because you have a smile. Be noticed because you have something good to say to someone, even though everything may not be worked out in my life exactly like I want it to be. I have a mandate. I have a mandate from God to be salt to be light, to let the world see Jesus in me. There's, a, there's enough of the stuff for people to see otherwise. I don't, want, I don't want to, and I try not to, but I'm not always successful. I try not to be that downer. You know, be, be salt, be positive. Let people look at you and, and uh, <laughs> I just thought of a word. I don't know who I don't know whose word this was, and I'll, I'll give you a, a good Alabama word. Is curious. <laughs> you know what curious means? That's kind of a play on for curious or different. Be different from the world. Be be different. Be salt. Be something that they want to ask you why. Why have why are you still smiling? That's why right. are you still going through this? So be salt. Be that, salt and be light everywhere you go. That's right, and. We hope that you have enjoyed hearing some of the things that I learned from Norellen's friend. And maybe by me sharing, you'll understand more about what it means to be the salt. You know, you're the salt of the earth. But anyway, we're going to go for today, but we will be back soon. Thank you so much for sharing this page. I, uh, I'm so blessed by all your comments. It means so much to us. But we'll be back soon. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.